Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. We made it to Wednesday. It Hard to believe. They didn't up, think we could. Here we back. are. Yeah. Run it back. FanDuel TV. Stadium Insider Sham Sharania. Chandler P. Don't and Lou down. Will. Don't look down. I, I never will. And it's not it's not, it's not good advice for anyone sitting next to Chandler to look down ever. Um, we were about to get this thing kicked off with Nuggets Timberwolves, and we're going to get to that. But we have a little breaking news, Shams. We do. Giannis and Tetecumpo out tonight against Boston. This matchup of 1-2 in the Eastern Conference. And we're going to have to wait until the playoffs to see this matchup with Giannis there. I'm told he did not even travel to what? Boston. He stayed in Milwaukee. They want to make sure his hamstring is right. Uh, he's dealing with some hamstring soreness. Tomorrow, the, the Bucks play uh, on Thursday at home against the Nets. So see how he feels then. Reevaluate him tomorrow and see if he can potentially play Thursday against against the Nets, but right now Giannis and Antetokounmpo out has been ruled out tonight. I feel cynical. Yeah, I kind of see what's happening here. If it's nothing serious, why go and travel and, and take, make the flight to Boston, play a really really intense game when you can just kind of sit this one out, chalk it up, and then kind of get your legs back at home against Brooklyn. Makes sense. No reason to rush it this time of the year. I know, but. It just seems kind of lame, and I don't love it. Would be a nice little preview. I was gonna the, say we the... kind of would like to see an, a possible Eastern Conference Finals situation. Nah, save it when it matters. Scouting report. <laughs> all right, fair enough. And the hamstring too. That thing <clears throat> can linger. And was... yeah, we could see all of your yeah. hamstrings <laughs> right now, so we're good. Um, Nuggets, Timberwolves. That was the game we had. And man, Jokic, he's so fun. Uh, leads his team 115-112 to the victory. No go bear, Kat, Nasreed, Nasreed all gone. But Jokic finished with 35 and 16. Shut up, Chandler. Uh, Anthony Edwards, watching you, 38 and eight. Look, they have the best odds to win the Western Conference. Duh, at plus 145. They're plus 325 to win the whole shebang. Should we do some futures tickets on this? It feels oh, like we're allowed to bet on basketball. Yeah. Yeah, just not in the now state of California. We just. <laughs> no, I'm talking about. Yeah. Me and this. Now we can. You're retired. Yeah. Okay. What? For sure. And I, by the way, I like. Hold on. How long have we been doing this show? You're just now asking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like go no, because I actually <laughs> want to make a bit. I like both of these odds. I like them both. I like plus 145 feel, for the conference. Feels like I, no yeah, 325 to win yeah, the title. I'll I, I take that bit. Parlay that. As good yeah. as Boston is, it's probably the team I trust the most. They just did it. They have the best player. Yep. Um, yeah, I like both of these odds a lot. I, I, yeah, I like the odds. I'm in. I didn't know now I that could, you know you could bet? Yeah, because I didn't know, you know, what if we stumble into a coaching position? I don't know who's going to put us in charge of a team. Okay, well, then, hold, then we can't. Not, then we can't. Obviously, but I'm just saying, like. Right now we're a free agent. Uh, Let it rip. All right. Yeah, do whatever you want until you have to answer to somebody else. Uh, Jokic right now for MVP is minus 310. Uh, it's free money. Mm. That's free money, too? Free money. He's winning MVP. I don't think it's even close. I think SGA's put up a great season. He's put himself on the map in this league. As an oh, absolute man. superstar, I, there's a reason that it's plus 460 and 310 because this is an absolute lock. It's Jokic's to lose. I'm still on the SGA train. I'm sorry. Stop. Are you? I'm not getting off. I'm not getting off. The, they're, listen, we were having this conversation when they were third and fourth in the Western Conference. They're sitting at number one, still have an opportunity to finish with it. I'm, st I'm still on the SGA train. I, listen, I can lose, but I'm, I'm, I'm living and dying. You did call it. this super early. You I did. did. You've been... So I'm like the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah, I can't change now. Yeah, you're right. You actually he can't. I, ha I have a better case now than I've ever had. So I'm staying there. I'm gonna change. I, I like Jokic. <laughs> 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 I, I had Tatum earlier. That's not happening. God, Jokic. No. It is Jokic, and he's running away with it. The minute Joel Embiid went out. If Tatum at those numbers that happened, yeah, that's a nice what if, ticket. What what if OKC has a number one seed? Yeah. In the West. Does that though? change anything for you? I mean, it should. After being honestly, a tenth seed in the should. play in last How year. young they are, how they've come out of nowhere, the season SGA at 25, 26 years old, being the leader of this team and the older guy on this team, what he's done, scoring the basketball. The older guy. Yeah, me up. it's it's crazy. He def. I mean, listen, he's gonna finish second in voting and maybe first. Who knows? But I just think Jokic, if, everything he's done. If they finish with that one seed. You think so? He's going to get more votes swung his way. Well, by the way. Than we, than we can consider. Also because the Jokic fatigue, perhaps. People are like, no, it's I think that's a real. I think that's a real thing. All right. That's a real thing. We're lazy when it, when it comes to stuff like that. We, we, want, some something, money on we want something new and exciting. We didn't have, we, we had no inclination that SJ would even be in this conversation. So for him to be right now runner up with the, with the best odds, yeah, I take it. You can put like money this. on it now that you can. I like this upset. Yeah, I'm betting this for sure, <laughs> and I'm and all three of these. And I'm also gonna bet uh, 
Denver to win the title. Next thing we and know. And the West. And Lou, the West. Lou's just the... got a real problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should probably slow down. Now that yeah. he's realized you can actually be doing yeah, this the it. entire time. Um, look, the Timberwolves missing. You you heard it off the top there. Basically, everybody. Gobert, Nas Reed, Cat's still out. The health and the fact that we are where we are in the month of March with things winding down. How big a concern, Lou? Very much like Giannis. I think some of these things are preventative. You know, you get, you're getting to the part of the season if you don't need them to play and you got some knickknack things, I'd rather give you another 48 to 72 hours to kind of put it on ice um, to prepare for the postseason. So I, I'm really not concerned here. They had a fight last night with Denver without those guys. True. You know, and, and Ant-Man and Mike Conley almost willed those guys to a big win that they, that they should have and could have won, but it didn't go their way. I think Denver made the right plays down the stretch um, to beat them, but they still were competitive, so I, I don't have any concerns. Yeah, I'm not like a moral victory guy, but this is about as good of a loss as this team could have. Missing three of their main guys. They had guys like McDaniel step up. Conley played great. Anthony Edwards was great. And you know what's funny? Watching this last play, I don't know if KCP did this on purpose or tried to bait it, but it's very smart what he did if he did it on purpose because a lot of times when you're down three, you're expecting guys to foul, right? So yeah. Anthony Edwards, I th he had no idea he was going to be that open. And so I don't know if KCP tripped or if he fell or if he tried to flop and get a foul call, but yeah. that was brilliant if he acted like he was going to foul him and then didn't because it and literally rattled in. Yeah, and let's address this. Shout out to the rules committee. A lot of basketball is being played. They're letting a lot go. They're yeah. letting guys play defense again. Even that played right there. Normally, 95% of the time, that would have been a that would have been a foul. Yeah. They put them on the line for two free throws. That's the game. Instead, they let them play on, give them an opportunity to tie the game. So, but you know, that's one of the new strategies now. If you're down three, you're gonna fight. Even though I hate it, I've argued with so many of my coaches about that strategy. Don't donate free throws to anybody because then you put the pressure on us to make free throws. We worked hard to get a three-point <clears throat> lead. Why are we donating free throws? And I think that's what. KCP was trying to do it and it almost bit him in the butt. Yeah, and as a coach, I am I'm gonna drill this now because it happens all the time, right? So I'm literally Make gonna sure try and foul. teach my guys either foul for sure before the shot goes up. Because you see, you always see these threes where it's like, damn, why didn't they foul? Why didn't let them have a chance to tie it? Make them make it, make them get an offensive rebound and a miss. But some I'm, coaches swear by it. Yeah, I, yeah I, I hate I'm, it. I'm the opposite. I, absolutely I, hate I like it. it as well. Why give a chance to win? Make them earn it. Make them miss a free throw on purpose with one second and get an offensive rebound tip. That's a lot harder to do than someone to hit a three. I'm curious with the new take foul rule though. If KCP blatantly takes a foul, do they get one free throw and the ball back in that in that scenario, yeah, that or is it? Yeah, I, I don't know how that works. But you know what I'm saying? I'm drilling as a coach to fake so foul you like to, to have them to have them try and get draw. You contact. like the strategy of actually giving them. the free I do because I don't want to give a team a chance. I want to make them earn it at the stripe, and then we make free throws or make them miss a okay. wild so I'll, offensive I'll, rebound. I'll play devil's advocate. I'm up three, foul. Give you two free throws. You foul me. Now we have to make free throws. I go down and I miss two. Well, you, you do this if there's me. like one to four or five seconds. No, we have coaches that they, they do, do it like 20, with, with 30. 20, 30 no, seconds. No, I'm doing, really? this, I'm doing this five yes. seconds or less. We have coaches that do this, and that's like the strategy. Like, we're going to foul. I have, I, I hate it. Maybe if like a DeAndre Jordan, Dwight Howard type gets the ball and, and, just, and you know, at the elbow or something, they're not foul even him. Gonna, but they're not like even 20 gonna seconds is way too much time. Yeah, I'm talking this possession seconds. last night, yeah, two this seconds was, left. This was tricky. Wrap them up, because then they don't have enough time to. And they were out of time free throws, you know what I mean? So, like, that situation, yes, 20 seconds, way too much. That's yeah, an eternity at the end of the game. Yeah. No way. Uh, big man update time. So, Gobert was out last night. We'll talk about him first. Any any news you could share? Rudy Gobert's still day-to-day. -day. So is Nas Reed. Uh, okay. But Rudy Gobert, he's got a rib sprain. He's day-to-day, -day and he oh, tried ribs? to play yesterday. That's, we'll that's see the if he plays their next Rudy game. Rudy Gobert injury I've what ever heard. What the hell? <laughs> um, Isn't a rib a bone? How do they called it a rib sprain. Yeah, well, you can sprain shut it. Shut up. Just don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> but away. the big one is Carl Anthony Towns. And he underwent meniscus <laughs> surgery. Uh, the hope is is still sometime early in the playoffs. I mean, he's effectively going to miss the rest, the rest of the regular season. Right. The hope is early in the playoffs. At some point in that first round, he's going to be able to make it back. He is coming back at that point from a torn meniscus. So we'll see exactly when he'll be back. But he's been posting a lot on Instagram. You know, he's clearly been... Been, been ramping up, trying to get ready, uh, at least teasing the potential of his return. By the way, Towns going out, that's one thing. 
but then you have Gobert and now Nas Reed. Yeah. That, that's going to be a lot to overcome. So hopefully these guys can figure out a way to get healthy. They've had a crazy year. Regardless, no one expected the Minnesota Timberwolves to be here no. right now. No one expected them to have the season they've had, and they've showed crazy gains. Anthony Edwards has become an absolute star, but they got to have at least two of these three bigs healthy to have a shot. Not just that, but we thought when Cat went down that would be a free, like a free fall, and that's not happening either. Free fall. Anthony. Well, they got a they got a little dude from Atlanta named Anthony Edwards. He's who's, not playing who's around. Done an amazing job of keeping them where they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch him take uh, take the onus. All right, Maverick Spurs. This was close. How about this for a moral victory, Chandler? Can yeah. you give it? Uh, Dallas, 113, 107. Kyrie, 28, 7, and 3. Luca, 18, 16, and 10, but only 6, 27 from the field. Wemby, 12, 11, and 6. No quad double yet, but the 16 assists for Luca also coming with a 6 of 27 mm. shooting night. So I don't know. Bad, just, just a bad night? Do we read into this? No, you don't read into it because it's Luca, and he's got to. He's he's forced to take a couple bad shots. He's forced to take some step backs. And look, everyone talks about his usage rate and how he does too much. But for them to win a game like this, this is a game that he can afford to do this against a team like San Antonio. And at the end of the day, they got the win. Is six <laughs> six for twenty seven great? No, but the guy did. There. But the guy did have you guys sixteen. Will all be laughing soon. The guy did have sixteen dimes. He only turned the ball over four times. So he 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 did force a little bit. But again, when you're playing a team like this, he he has the luxury to almost do that and he still got out of there with the win so I would just chalk it up as some tough shots that didn't go down and when you take the shots he does take he's gonna have some bad shooting nights like this where he he, he takes the long step backs the end of the shot clock where he's going ISO they're not high percent shots in the first place so he's gonna have some off nights like this and none of his teammates care no coaches don't care. ultimate green light the only time this is a problem when it's a guy shooting that doesn't supposed to be shooting ah, as much yes, as he is, is. <laughs> now when yeah. you're Luka Doncic or somebody like that nobody cares bro shoot until you make one even if it's a situation where someone's getting played off it almost hurts the team not shooting this much so even if it's not Luka if it's Tim Hardaway and they're just letting him shoot threes you got to take the open shot all right, let's talk about you guys personally. Have you had nights? Because when you're watching a game and, and guys having an off night, we get the whole shooter shoot. You got to get out of it, all that. But mentally, how hard is it to just look up and be like, I cannot make a it's single not, one? It's actually more comical than anything. Huh. Like, if you can't make a shot, you look at your teammates, they look at you, and they're going, hey, keep shooting, bro. We don't care. Shoot until you come out of it. Shoot until you come out of it. So at that point, it just becomes a game inside of the game. Like, I'm going to shoot until I make one of these. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you have bad nights that stick out? Absolutely. I yeah, probably had a ton of them. Bad ones, My yeah. job was to score. So I'm sure some nights I just didn't have it. And again, even the nights that you're you're off, you know you put in the work, you know you put in time, and you truly believe the next one's going in. So yeah, I, I think you might get a little hesitant. You miss five, six, seven in a row. But if you're open and you're aggressive, just at you that, gotta shoot with confidence. No, Chandler, at that seven, eighth one, at this point, I'm I, missing 20 in a yeah, row. I don't what's, care. What's the difference going two for 10? Because now you're in. Yeah, same, same what thing. about eight of 24? You did that. I mean, that's just one of it. Did I do that? Like, yeah, you did that. Um, what are you, the Schwab over there? <laughs> eight of 24? That's actually not that bad. <laughs> eight of 24. It feels game, like Eight of 24, though. when I have 25, I'd it be an all star. It depends on where the eight were placed, though, also. What's what Lou's worst game? I feel like Lou's an efficient shooter. It's all about numbers. You had a two for 19 night against the Pacers. Damn. But, but, how many free throws did he have that night, though? I bet you I didn't stop shooting. I don't have that information. I bet you I didn't stop shooting. Think about Lou, though. I'm Two not for 19. Two for crazy. 19. You know what? Two. So, Lou has some off Two nights, but then he'll get to the line like, oh my God, it's on the sheet. I missed one more shot yeah. than he did. <laughs> I'm like, how the hell do you know this? Uh, I know everything. By the way, I had 21 points, 8 of 24. I'd be an all-star this year. Yeah. That is right. <laughs> I didn't even see that. That's crazy. I was like, how the hell does she know this? Yeah, why would I know that? By the I don't way, even know what day it is. Yeah, I mean, two for 19 is nuts, Lou. But I get two, two shots. That's insane you missed 16 shots. I missed 17. It just the, the numbers are worse. Yeah, they're not good. Well, the two really. <laughs> they're not great. I think the two not feels great. very weird. Um, there was a full court uh, moment last night for Luca that we need to watch the video of because why not? It's a good, an excuse to watch some fun Luca stuff right here. Man, that court is bright. How are we liking that? That's this? a great pass. That's an amazing. They, they also a great had pass. another one yeah, at, the, the, at one the beginning of the first to Kyrie that was full court that he beat the buzzer again. I'll tell you this, Michelle, I love this court. Do you? I love those colors. It's like a really, San Antonio, yeah. like a little tan and brown. Yeah. It's got a little Santa Fe yeah, to it. What's feels crazy is this wasn't right. even his best pass. You're right. He had the one in the paint where he literally threw it behind his head. Try like last week, right? You talking about the one last week? Yeah. When you yeah. make passes like this, you can you can go six of twenty-seven. He traveled his ass off too. <laughs>
it's fine. Remember when Russ kept getting called with that where he would grab the he ball just, and take and seven walked down steps the court. and finally refs was like, travel. <laughs> travel. <laughs> Maybe they thought they were being And taunt, he was so like, baffled at the call. <laughs> like he took 18 <laughs> steps. It's like a little bit shocking. Yeah. Um, we know what the strategy is. It's a lot of Kyrie and it's a lot of Luka. But as this thing goes into the playoffs, what are we thinking about for the X factor here? P.J. Washington, to me, that's the guy you traded a first-round pick for, traded Grant Williams away for, and and people internally there view him as kind of like an Aaron Gordon type of player, a guy that can defend multiple positions, athletic, shoot the ball a little bit, play multiple positions for you offensively as well. So I, I look at him as being their X factor. Daniel Gafford, I think you can make a case for him as well. He had 13 points, the eight rebounds. But he's he, 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 in my opinion, he's holding his end of the bargain up. Uh, P.J. Washington last night, I think four points. He's a guy, if, if he's able to step his game up, you know, get in that 15-point range, I think this team has, has a real chance potentially to do some damage. Yeah, I think it's P.J. Washington, especially like you said, they give a first-round pick. That's, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. For, you know, that's, that's value in that pick. So I think he's the perfect stretch four. I think he can play off Luka and Kyrie. He's a great pick-and-pop guy with Gafford and Lively rolling to the rim. So I do think he can be that critical kind of third scoring option, along with Tim Hardaway Jr. He's going to have some games where he's going to get high. He's going to hit seven, eight threes. He might take 15, but as long as he's shooting in that 40, 50% range in the playoffs and he's, and he's getting 15 to 22 points a game, he could also be a great third option for this team. I would chime in and say Tim Hardaway Jr. You know, he's been there just as long as Luka. This is very much a, as part of his team yeah. as, as anybody else. You know, I, I, I would challenge him to start putting the ball on the floor a little bit more. He lived and died by that three so much. Put some pressure on the defense that'll open up the three-point shot for you. We are going to take a quick break right here on the other side. Vince Carter standing by back. to do a little chat here on Run, run it, back. it Back. He's eight. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. He's back. Vince Carter is in the house. 22-year vet. Um, telling us how cold it was in the break, but 55, we've all 55, voted. 55, man. It's not cold. It's frost delay on the golf course. <laughs> oh it, it is. It's a frost delay. <laughs> I'm really having a, a problem with the whole thing. Absolutely. Um, I got long sleeves on. This is ridiculous. Yeah, no, I, there's like panic in your eyes. Like, you don't know if you're going to survive <laughs> yeah. this. Um, we were talking bad shooting nights, just sort of the whole mm. idea that you just get out of it. You shoot yourself out of it. Yeah. They had a couple bad ones they could share. Do you remember one? I know. Through? Okay, go. <laughs> I, I, there's plenty of them, uh, <laughs> you know, for over 22 years. But, you know, I agree. You shoot yourself uh, back in, in rhythm, especially if you, you have the green light. But at some point, you know, I, I, Lou said, when you're the star, you, you say shoot it, you don't care. At some point, me, a teammate, I'm like, get a little closer. Right. You know, see one go in, get so fouled, try to get a layup, and then work your way back out. The ho hopefully uh, that uh, that'll kind of get you back in in rhythm. But yes, I've had some some rough nights where I was just like, man, look. That was my thing. I used the free throw line as my little yeah. in between. That was your thing. Yeah. And see, so for me, I was shot, trying to I'm get if I can get line. close to the rim, get a layup, a dunk, or whatever. That usually you know boosts your confidence a little bit. In the interest of fairness, three for twenty in a playoff game. Ooh, See, now we all have a moment. Yeah, was it, was it against the, the Knicks? <laughs> we could share. Was it against the Knicks? Was it against, yeah, the, it was against Knicks? the Knicks? Yep. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, don't forget uh, that. I do. <laughs> You're not, he's never going to forget yeah. that. Yeah. that I still won't stings. ever forget Jeff Van Gundy and triple teams. It was against a triple team, man. Hey, man, you uh, have coaches matter. that tell you, hey, have short-term memory, and I took that advice and ran with it. I don't remember anything. <laughs> that's how I like to live my whole life. I, I remember three for 20, though. Three for 20, yeah. That's, there he goes. Okay, so maybe Chandler's wasn't the worst. I, mine was eight for 24, yeah, and I had 21. I said I'd be an all-star if I did that this year. <laughs> <laughs> Can we at the clip? They're taking shots. <laughs> Me and Lou missed 17 shots, man. Come on, that's, all good. Yeah. that's all right. Got out of hey, it. it didn't, hey, like, like Lou said, it didn't bother me the next game. Yeah. I got to keep going. Keep going. Um, Reload we, the clip. We are officially in March Madness. Yesterday it started, although oof, some of those mm -hmm. games were a little bit weird. But uh, Tar Heels with the one seed. How are we hey, feeling? Are, is it the Gators? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Don't do that. that Don't do I that. I got Colorado. No, I want to hear I the smack Colorado. talk. Go, go, go. No, we, I'm just saying, I got Colorado. 
We we did get robbed with our C book. We, I actually got did Colorado you? too. Oh my God! <laughs> Sitting right next. Take to it him? all bets. You both have my number. Let me know how much you want. I, do, I like Colorado because it's unpredictable. You Who, like it Colorado? Is, it, it really it's yeah. unpredictable. This is going to be the probably side. the best tournament we've seen in so long because there there's a couple favorites, but anybody could get beat. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna be it's the, the beauty of it. Yeah, it's gonna be the beauty. I, of I'm it. gonna tell you. Okay, I'll tell you this. I'll give you my side. I, I know yo, we have Wagner. I watched that game. I scouted it. You know, I'm ready to send in my report to, nice. to, to the Hills. But uh, there's there's some teams that, you know, Clemson's in there, eh, whatever. Uh, but Arizona's in our bracket. Mm -hmm. And Caleb uh, Love, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, transferred there. And that would be an uh, unreal matchup to go to the Final Four. So that can go either way. And, you know, he's had, you know, you know a great year. But can you imagine? Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to that. Has UNC played Michigan State second round? They do. That they would, do. That's the that's, tough one. That's a tough one. So you like the Tar okay. Heels? I, I do. I, if the the number four, you know, top four seed Tar Heels show up that we've seen over the year, over the course of the year, we've been in the top five and just tried to slow play our way into the season or into a game, and you can't do this in the playoffs. Like I said, Michigan State is tough. Uh, Alabama out there is tough. Uh, I think you know, there's Baylor. Um, and of mm -hmm. course, Arizona. So I, I do like us. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, we have obviously the coach of the year right now. And I think they're focused on the mission. I, I, NC State gave us a nice wake up call. 24 and a half point favorites in round one. That's crazy. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen, no. but it is just. I'm a, betting everything. I'm, I'm, I'm betting but everything. But it's the 16 seed, so usually <laughs> those numbers look high in, in the first round. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Look, uh, yesterday we had Tyler Hansborough, uh, Hansborough on the show, um, one of your, your Tar Heel brothers. Psycho T. Um, and we got into the discussion about NILs. What kind of bag <laughs> Coach K got to drop to turn that Tar Heel blue into a Duke blue? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what? What? what uh, let me see. There's what a is, number, uh, man. There's a number for there's everything. Definitely a number. <laughs> what's what's Russ Westbrook making this year? <laughs> Brown there. It, it's got. It's got to be like okay, yeah. I, I can't imagine. I, like hmm. I, I visited Duke. Uh, you know, obviously on my time, and I just, I don't know. It, it'd have to be a, a big bag to, to, to do that because it's the money a, is great. It's just a vibe the over there, bro. Duke. I, I it is. It. It's just it's a just vibe. different vibe. Corny. It is a different <laughs> <laughs> I'm on one today, BC. I'm already mentally yeah. checked out. Got... All good. All good. <laughs> when were you mentally checked in? <laughs> BC, obviously the goal is to win a national championship. Final four is always, you know, that was a huge step too. I never, I got knocked out in the elite eight. What were your best hmm. memories from going there? I think twice, right? Twice, back to back. Um, best memories it was obviously getting there after that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, freaking Mike Bibby, mm. my first year as a freshman goes crazy on us. Uh, and we had, we had, we were up at half and, you know, you, Lou, you said some things you just forget. You don't forget that. Mm -hmm. And then the second year we lose to Utah, and uh, Andre Miller decides he wants to get a triple double against us. <laughs> oh yeah. And yeah, and they ended up losing to Kentucky. So, uh, but fond memories. And and I, it's funny. I talked to Antoine Jameson literally yesterday, and we were bringing up college basketball, and, and obviously we briefly talked about our time. And but yeah, I know if you know three days ago it was the the anniversary of Darvin Ham <laughs> shattering the glass against us. <laughs> Texas Tech, yeah, that too. That was in the tournament too. That's crazy to think that that even. By the way, we have Mike Bibby on the show next week. If you have any messages or anything you want us to relay, we can do that Hi, for Mike. you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Mike. That's it. Okay, perfect. Uh, nailed it. Um, can we talk the Anthony Edwards dunk for a second? Because obviously, an amazing sure. dunk happens, and and people think of you automatically. Your they your need to think of Blake Griffin also. Uh, that's mm. that's fine. I know there's a lot of talk about that as well. Because he had one of those similar. I know, I didn't really see that controversy, by the way. But have you seen anybody go into like, concussion protocol from getting a poster <laughs> event? Because I've never seen that. Hey, I've never seen First this. of all, we're talking about one of my former teammates, so I'm going to tread lightly. <laughs> Me I love too. John. We are teammates with him together. Look, we all play with him. We all play with him. Hey, we all play with him. <laughs> we play with him at the same time, oh, Vince. Oh, buddy. I wasn't I on the court, okay. but I was in the locker room. Yeah, I, know, I, I, I do recall. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, particularly when you're talking about a guy who who had the nickname John the Baptist, mm, <laughs> for, right. you know, for him to be on the other end. I mean, it's just uh, one thing, John, right there. there is when he said that was a bad decision. He's <laughs> too high. Bad business decision. Man. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he caught a forearm to the right to the cheekbone, and that was it. But, like, 
it's one thing. I mean, both of them had intentions. One had intentions to block, and the other one had bad intentions. Bro. And <laughs> super were, athlete wins. They were and, and it's super. crazy saying that because John is a super athlete. Right. But they, not like that. There were people actually trying to pick this dunk apart yesterday what? saying, I know. Well, he didn't touch the rim. It's not an actual dunk. I okay. said, you know who said that? People who never dunked the basketball. Who never dunked. That's harder than, dunk, than actually grabbing a rim and dunking the basketball. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because there. if you look at young guys up, yeah, exactly. Because if you have to be high enough, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you have to be high enough to be able to throw the ball in. You can't just be fingertip and right. then talk about I'm going to throw it in because it's not going to happen. You have to be high He's enough. And it, 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 he was close. Correct. He was close enough to the rim to where I don't consider the throw in. There's been some dunks that, you know, from a distance and still you have to be high enough to even throw it, throw the ball in. I mean, go to, for you, for, for you who've never done, go to an eight foot rim and just try to throw it in. This dunk is a 10 out of 10. By the no way, flaws in this, in this highlight. This is how yeah. I know. I, we didn't even address this as being a controversy. We didn't even bring it up. And then I leave the show yesterday morning and listen to sports talk radio. And everyone's like, well, was it even a dunk? I'm like, we didn't even ask that It was a dunk. Says a guy question. who's never dunked a basketball right. ever in your life. Like, bro, shut up. That's kind of what I thought it would be. <laughs> That's right. the nastiest dunk. Uh, thank you. It was, it was also, uh, it gave us life. Um, would he win a dunk contest if, if he were to, enter next year, where do you think he'd be? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it, so I'm the wrong person when it comes to this. And, and you know, it, he's super athletic. It's about his imagination. I think he has some imagination. Obviously he jumps out of the gym. <laughs> so I think he has the time. John, <laughs> John Collins, uh, you know, jumps extremely high and is a super athlete. And he was in the dunk contest. And a lot of thought. <laughs> I think Ant-Man thought is a he guy. would do well. So I just look at you know imagination. I, I do think he he would do very well in the dunk contest. Um, can, can we not even ask this? Bottle? But I just want him to take it seriously. Would he, he beat does. Mac? Would he beat? Well, he beat. We Taylor don't know Brown. if he's just like a good in-game he's dunker. In he, 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 he might just be an in-game dunker. By the way, same Correct. with Zion. Zion saying he's if he makes the the game next year, he's gonna want. Maybe he yep. doesn't have like maybe he's just powerful like in-game it's, it's, physical dunker. So why don't we put and, and, like three dudes on the court and simulate a game and then we want to see dunk. it because they're superstars I, I, and they they show in their balance, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily good contest. But Beetle, think about this. Okay, if you did that, all right, and you're talking about a dunk contest instead of in-game. Yeah. Will you be just as wild? You know, I, I think I, I think it'll lose its 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 pop because it's a dunk contest, and you're looking for a trick more so than right. Yeah, like you if, know, he if you just take that, a guy up and oh, go block it. my dunk and dunk it, like you like you're like okay, if that was cool. He, so we changed he the judges. more in a dunk contest. Then no, we but if the he judges. did that dunk jumping over like Shaq or Yao Ming, I don't think we think it's that cool. Yeah. Like we've never point. seen him go between yeah, the no, legs. Right. We've never seen him do a windmill, anything like that. We've seen oh. him dunk through people. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've seen him do windmills, but like I said, a windmill, a regular windmill in a dunk contest does not wow you enough. Oh, it's a six. In a dunk co contest as it would in game. In a game, right. yeah. Especially so when it's an and one, stop the game, replay, like in a game is much more impressive. Yeah. Yeah, it's You it's see that dunk in, in a, if he did that same dunk in the We're dunk contest. We're booing him. And if that's in the You're dunk just contest. like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, six, seven, uh, eight, maybe, depending, you know, but so I don't think it. We need some technology. Then we need a game simulation dunk contest. Yeah. How do we, we need the smart people to figure this out? You're, you're not going to have some guys things playing. We're going to leave AI out of it. Right, one. And for two, I just think it just comes to guys and their imagination. Just yeah. look at the history of the dunk contest. It was guys who took the, you know, their imagination to the next level. That's what I wanted to do. Like, I, arm in a rim. I was like, all right, let's do something different. Obviously, I had to execute it, but let's, let's be different, you know. And, you know, Matt McClung giving you something different. And then you look at his height, jumping over guys and still throwing it backwards. You just have to have an imagination. And guys just got to think through it a little bit, you know? I think it's going to be him. I think it's going to be Anthony Edwards. And let me be the last to say this. There are more dunks out there. Stop saying people out there. Stop saying there's nothing else you can do. Well, go on YouTube and look at some of the guys out there in the yeah. street, what they're doing. Again. There's dunks out there. It's not a lot of people that have the imagination or the balls to try it. That's Again, VC, we're talking about people who have never dunked a keyboard, basketball. Keyboard warriors. I love those guys. So, VC, do you think Anthony Edwards is the best shooting guard in the NBA, just 22 years old? I think he's one of the best going right now. Um, and he's playing with a lot of confidence, swagger. He believes it. And those are the scariest guard guys to, to play against. It's like, you know, I, I think about Kobe. We all knew Kobe was great, but he knew he was elite. And guys who have the ultra green light, like, like Kobe did, was tough. Uh, and I think 
Anthony is right there. He's he's he believes he's the best player, and those are the scariest ones and the toughest to guard. And he's showing it at the same time. I don't know. I'm still picking my guy. Chandler's what? looking at Chandler's looking at Devin Booker over. I there. think Devin Booker is probably the best shooting guard. Oh, is that what you're doing? I still, I'm just looking at if you. I mean, um, Luke is a point, right? Yes, Anthony Edwards point. has arrived. Anthony Edwards is he's honestly he's probably second or okay, first. Yeah, he's dead nice. All right. So, VC, another thing, I've been reporting on a lot of the names for Team USA basketball, potentially this job. Obviously, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Devin Booker, potentially Anthony Edwards as well. Um, he, you know, I, I did report yesterday, he, want, he feels like he wants to go into it and try to start on that team. Who do you believe will be the best starting five for USA basketball this oh, summer? Man, that's tough. I mean, I, I, right now, I think Team USA is going to put the best product on the floor. And you, know, you can't... You can't go wrong. Uh, by the way, I, I don't know if you mentioned Bam out of bio. I think Bam needs to be on there. Mm -hmm. And a, a big enough big who can rebound and start to break with all that scoring and can pass, I, I think Bam would be a, a great addition if you said I'm not sure if you said that or not. But <clears throat> I, I think you can't go wrong either way. I, I, I think the toughest position as a – the job as a coach is to figure out who you're going to start, but you want the scoring – you want balanced scoring. You want scoring coming off the bench. So I'm not opposed to having Anthony Edwards coming off the bench, Devin Booker coming off the bench scoring either because somebody's not going to be in rhythm because they're used to being the go-to guy. And that's the, usually the toughest challenge for, I think, these guys when you put a, a you know an a Olympic or all-star team together. Vince, Chandler and I are looking at it. We got the same four. It's basically going to be who's the fist targets. It's going to be Steph, KD, LeBron, and Joel. Correct. So who's going to be like that two guard? It's going to be Jason Tatum. Tatum or I think Tatum. Tatum I, I think he's the next up. And, and see, and what's wrong with coming off with yeah, with a, a Booker and, and Anthony and, Edwards? And, and, right. There's and, not. And, it doesn't and, matter. And just give me a just give me a facilitating big. And then oh, if you have Bam, yeah, that's Bam coming off like like oh my gosh, man. They have. I, I think they're going to make a statement this year. They're going to put the mm -hmm. best lineup on the floor to blow them out, and they're going to beat people to death this year, to just Olympics, because of bro. the whispers I'm, I'm a, you know I, I, I still think because show. canada canada is going to be very good spain is going to be very good so what we need france? to put our best product france exactly france They're, france <laughs> is going to be good Wemby, Rudy they need to put yeah. The, yeah they need to put the best product out there because I, I feel like those teams right there alone you know, are, are going to give people problems. I just think the USA, I think they're going to try and beat the brakes off every I think the show should go to year. Paris. Get to. us back to, the, you know what I mean? We like, have to. We have we to. We have to. Like Vince said, we have to, Michelle. I mean, it's, it's only the pride of a nation. going to Paris. No, but, <laughs> wow, wow is this our first long road trip, international yeah. road trip? All right, That's I'm a different back long in. trip. That's By a way, long, what, long road what, trip. What, what's it like playing for Team US? I mean, I just pictured it as like a movie montage where you walk in and everyone's like, oh, but is is it? It's next level. It's next level. I can't even... You know, I can't even explain it. It's, it's like, I mean, obviously playing in the All-Star game, obviously, you know, but there's a lot more on the line. <laughs> it's it's like, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, 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 you can't even compare anything to it I mean, because you're representing your country more so. Because I was like, it's like being on that great AAU team, traveling, playing against the best, but it's like, it's next level because you're playing for your country. Um if you guys do go, I do recommend going to opening ceremonies. It was unbelievable. More so than anything, you know, the two things that I, I take with me was opening ceremony and obviously hearing that anthem when you're receiving the gold medal was two of the most uh, uh, iconic, unbelievable moments. You, you see it on TV and it just gives you chills, but being a part of it was nothing like it. They got, they got Airbnbs in Paris. Yeah, they got everything sure in they Paris. Do. They've also lifted the intimacy ban uh, on the village. 300,000 oh, condoms being handed <laughs> out. So we got that going for us. What? Whoa. In the athlete's village. Because last <laughs> time it was what COVID. Yeah, yeah, it was, was COVID. COVID. Yeah, that's Paris, true. It's called news. It, it, Look into in it. In Japan. I mean, in Japan, they had, it was, it was, it, that's awesome. the thing. Yeah. yeah I so just read that. It's back, baby. I did Look the math. Out. It's like 20 per athlete in the village. It's it's just a 20, lot. 20 condoms an athlete? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, moving on. That's Sorry. an event in itself. <laughs> See, I got He's, their attention. Uh, He's Louise. We get, we, can we talk Zion Williamson? Because he gets a lot of heat for a variety of reasons. But he's, he's averaging, yeah, I got you, <laughs> 23, 6, and 5. <laughs> I know, I could have brought up all kinds of stuff there, couldn't I? Um, he's only missed 11 he games this enough. season, by the way. That's the praise that we should be talking about. We don't right. really talk about the Pelicans at all, which is weird. Um, has he made a move to maybe reestablish himself in some people's minds that he's an all-star? Two things I'm going to say. Confidence and believing in 
what the organization organization is selling and put around him. I, I think those are two things that are huge for him because it was like, oh, yeah, is he going to come back? I don't know, possibly being traded. That's all we kept hearing about, the, the spat, him not coming in the workout, blah, 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 to, to this. And I think we all knew he has the ability if he was there. You look at the Pelicans and how good they were without him. Now you add him. Now he's playing the point for it, which I really like because – Stan, shout out to Stan Van Gundy, who people kind of questioned it before, but it opens things up for him. Yes, I still think I would love to see his rebounding go up. I, I just think he, he you know, he, he's dominant, and they, they that just takes them to a level, another level come playoff time. But his ability to create willing passer, and then you put him with a second unit where he can be your go-to guy as far as scoring. I like what the Pelicans are selling. I watched them uh, play. What was that? The uh, Clippers, and they have everything you need outside of the experience. So they're going to be a tough out. VC, he also looks, you know, like in peak shape, like we've seen he over the last a lot few of years. Yeah. What, what do you see from him from a physical perspective and also translating that into his so game? So it's always been my thing for him. Great athlete, jumps really high. I'm just like, you know, if you're talking about 280, 290, 300, whatever he was going up, coming down, that's a lot. How long will he be able to do that? He looks in good shape he's moving i mean it was a move he had on the baseline just one dribble to the middle spin back i mean he's already strong but he's quicker i mean it, it's he it, that's what i'm saying it's i think he's committed to the growth and the success of this organization now and that's a great sign for the pelicans yeah just missing 11 games too and this dude that's came in with such huge. high expectations and unfortunate injuries health he's been kind of ran through the yeah. media in the mud and i'm just happy to see him on the court and the pelicans no one's talking about him. they're the fifth seed. all they've had a great year everyone's talking about the clippers the suns the nuggets this team obviously they haven't done it before so we don't trust them but they've had a hell of a season i like how but we say Taylor, everyone real, yeah but Taylor, like you know this better than anyone as far as injuries you know you can't gain weight you can't have more mm. weight when you've had those type of injuries, lower no. body extremity energy injuries like he's had. You have to lose that weight to keep the pressure off, especially, especially playing the sport that we play. Right. It's a lot of running, a lot of pounding, a lot of side-to-side -side shifting and whatever, and I think he's now committed, and that's why we're seeing 11 games missed, fifth in the uh, in, in the West. You can just physically see it on him, too. It just looks, yeah, he looks, it looks better. Yep. The guns are out, baby. Love uh, Vince, love you. I hope you can find yourself a nice puffer coat and really bundle up uh, <laughs> when you venture back outside today. Best of luck. We'll Stay warm, soon. Vince. <laughs> That's all right. Got some hand warmers. You know where I'm going. <laughs> Take a quick break. We'll be back with, on the other side, Johnny Foosball, baby. Yeah. That's from Run It Back Returns. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. I got the energy, I got the will to survive, I got the energy, I got the energy, I got energy, I got energy, energy. energy. Yeah. I don't even need to read the accolades because it's Johnny freaking Manziel and I think that's kind of how we start this thing and, and you're here because Chandler, he swore he would get you on this show one day, and it's finally happened. Uh, it's I, I thought he was failing. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. You're 20, better late than never, but you are he's tardy here. to the party, no, dude. Hey, ne never late is better, Chan. Never <laughs> late is better. That's true. By the way, how do you two know each other? How does this, this friendship, only hell could muster up, come to be? Um, I guess right now I just get hustled on the golf course weekly, so <laughs> that's about what our friendship is on right now. Oh, yeah, we met a while ago. Just uh, and me, and Chan, in me and Chan go back a long ways. We uh, from his days in Houston, from um, his time he spent in Dallas with oh, wow. the Mavs. I mean, this is really probably 10, 12 years into this friendship right now, and somebody I truly call a dear friend, and we have a lot of fun. That's like a legit. Yeah, we went throwback there on that picture there. Jesus. Yeah, that's a nice house like, you had, Jen. Huh? Throw them in the water. That's a nice house pool. you had there. I know. What, which house was that? Uh, unclear, Michelle. We've been on the <laughs> okay, move for a while. Uh, Deuce, I was telling them about, so when I played on the Grizzlies, Johnny was on the Memphis was the, as an XFL team, and Joe Keem Noah was there. Oh, wow. We had a whole, we had a squad, and basically me yeah, and Johnny house. were living together for this time period. So anything in particular, remember me busting that ass in ping pong, any, any situations in, oh, in particular? We, uh, we had a great system going in Memphis. <laughs> Me and uh, Chandler and Joe Kim would take uh, bird scooters to the games <laughs> in Memphis, and it really was um, a great time to be there, even though it was a short amount of time. Um, 
Chan's always been a really good friend to me, always allowed me to hang around, be in the NBA circle, so I get to feel like a hooper at times. Can you go back to Memphis, by the way? Because Chandler cannot yeah, go I'm, back to Memphis. I think I'm going to go on Friday for my uh, Texas A&M, you know, Aggies in the tournament. Um, Please so wear my Grizzlies jersey, Johnny. Please wear <laughs> no, my jersey. No, he's going to get escorted <laughs> out. You might get sniped. <laughs> <laughs> they might think it's you. Oh, God. <laughs> they might think it's you. All right, Deuce. Um, I think yeah, I'll I got, be all right, Jan. I do have that jersey, so I may have to bust it out as I sit. By the way, that was the again. that was the best thing. So he comes to Memphis, huge deal. Johnny Manziel going to play football there. I'm um, like Bin Laden in that city when he comes there, <laughs> and literally his first game, he wears my jersey. Oh my god! Walking in the tunnel to his football That's a good game. Good friend. It was a bold move, that Johnny. It was a bold Thank move. You, I was say, That's that. a ballsy move right there. <laughs> Johnny, I want to ask you this. We always we play golf together. He's a stick, by the way. Damn near a scratch golfer. Who would be your dream foursome if you had to you had to pick? And I mean on golf on the golf yeah, course. Yeah, clarify that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for the clarification, Shan. I, I would put you in there. Yeah. I enjoy playing golf with you um, a lot. You're you're a good uh, you're a good time. You're a good gambler. I would put Tiger in there mm -hmm. um, as well. You have to play golf with Tiger Woods um, in that foursome. And for a fourth spot, um, I got to find somebody who's cooler than you, so I'll probably take Brady. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Brady, you said? <laughs> See, I want like yeah, a John. Brady. Give me John Daly. Give me someone in there to really spice things up. John Daly. Yeah, we know what you like. However, times have changed in my life, Chan, and I'm a little more calm, cool, and collected at this I love point that. in my life. I love that for you. <laughs> Tom so, Brady's cooler than you? No chance. Okay, fair enough. So, Johnny, did you play football, and what made you give up? Uh, or no, did you play basketball? And what made you give up basketball for football, baseball, anything else? Yeah, my dad, my dad made me give up basketball. You know, I was, um, man, I was too small and um, I was too white. So <laughs> that was really what it comes down Happy to. Both. There's only like eight of us in the <laughs> league, Johnny. <laughs> Slim pickets. <laughs> Johnny, I seen a, I seen a video of you uh, dunking a basketball, man. Can you can you still dunk? Can you still get on the rim? And, and who would you who would you uh, model your game after? There you go. I mean, oh, I think hey. I'm like a I think I'm like a Zion Williamson to be honest. <laughs> oh. it's not like that's re that's really what I think it is. But I don't know if I can dunk anymore, man. Like I would love oh, to go out and try it, but I have to find man. out um, if I can this week. This was. Years ago, and I oh, know yeah. I don't have. But this is impressive, now. though. This is this pretty is good. Impressive. I this appreciate is. it, but I got Chandler Parsons knees these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they can't be that bad, Coach. They cannot be that bad. Um, Johnny, we always talk about the the goat quarterback of all time of NFL. A lot of people say Tom Brady. Obviously, is Pat Mahomes have an argument? Who do you think the goat is? The goat, in my eyes, probably still. Man, I have a different opinion. I love Michael Vick. But oh, that was just whoa. the way, uh, that was just the running style and this. <laughs> You're going to really call the GOAT. Mahomes is well on his way, but you got to go win six, seven Super Bowls to go beat Brady. So. Michelle, Michelle's a real <laughs> dog lover. Well, I just Jesus was like that. Of all the names, I'm like, well, that's not the one I thought was coming out today. <laughs> oh, man, that is so good. What was the question? Could have been better. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, you got more back, back, to your, back to your point, though, Chan. I mean, Mahomes is the guy. Right now, everybody's got to go knock him off. I mean, what he did in the Super Bowl this year, the last couple of years, um, I mean, how can you not love that guy? You get a chance to spend some time around him. I know you guys are homies. So um, who's doing it better than Mahomes right now in any mm. sport? And now NBA-wise, who you got, uh -oh. MJ or Braun? I mean... That's just like, what are we going to sit up here and have the same debate you guys have every <laughs> single day? That's I why mean, you're a pit. By the way, me and Lou think it's Braun. Oof. I mean, I've been a Braun guy my whole life. Like, But MJ is hard to, uh, can I be a Kobe guy? For okay. sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. I love the Bamba mentality. That's right up my alley. <laughs> couple, like couple weeks ago on uh, Club Shay Shay, you mentioned that you wouldn't do anything Heisman related until Reggie Bush's Heisman is returned back to him. I'm just, I'm curious to know, has anybody reached out to kind of bridge that gap or no? Yeah, I've, uh, I kind of reached out myself a little bit. You know, I called um, a lot of former winners. I think a lot of guys um, who are, you know, some of the newer, more recent winners feel 
the same way that I do. So, Good. you know, I won't throw anybody's name out there or anything like that. But I went and did the due diligence on my own to reach out, call the trust, uh, make sure that there weren't any, you know, issues with what I was saying and what was going on and really try and get everybody on the same page because that's what it comes down to. You know, this is a very, you know, important situation, not only to me, but, you know, Reggie, a lot of the young guys. So, you know, we've had talks and I think we're in a better place now than we were um a couple months ago, a month ago. Dude, so obviously NIL is like the biggest thing right now in college athletics and you would have been, you know, mm -hmm. severely paid in that aspect. What would it have taken for like a Nick Saban in a Florida? What kind of bag are we talking to drop to get you to leave A&M and go to one of those schools? Probably the same contract you got in Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> that's a heavy, that's a heavy contract, coach. I don't know about it that. It is, but it was. Uh, nevertheless, Chan, I always give you, I always give you some crap for it. It was well deserved. So don't let anybody ever give you shit, and I know you won't. Thank you, coach. Um, also, the 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 NCAA football, the video game is coming back, and you definitely would have been the next cover athlete for that. You, did you ever think about that, like how things would have been <laughs> if they were, the rules were now? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think about it. I think it's something that I still have, uh, you know, a want and a desire to be a part of the game. Um, you know, for me, being able to be in the last year of the video game that they had um, and be the best player in that game, me and, me and Clowney, was kind of dope because I still throw that on an Xbox and, you know, I'm able to go back and play it. And you know, I played that game my whole life growing up. I enjoyed it. I'm excited that it's coming back. I just really hope... Um, you know, that they find a way to incorporate a lot of the old Heisman winners and, you know, make it cool because I think it's something that um, they need in the world right now as far as video games go. And your number one guy at A&M was Mike Evans. I know you speak volumes of him all the time. Where does he rank in your opinion of, you know, receivers of all time? I mean, right now he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, you know, walking and still playing. And, you know, what he's done as far as 1,000-yard receiving seasons – um, only other person that has done anything near that or remotely close is really Randy Moss. And he's still, you know, at this point in time, Mike is blazing his own path. He's absolutely crushing it. Got a new contract back in Tampa with Baker. So, you know, the sky is the limit for Mike, but just because of who he is as a person and who he is as a football player. So, you know, I rank him at the top of the list as far as um, people that I've got a chance to play with and just, you know, true brothers in the sport of football. So, Johnny, I know you were at the Drake show uh, a couple nights ago in OKC. Uh, Shea Gillis Alexander, Chet Holmgren also were there. Uh, did you get, first of all, that's a lot of stars out there. <laughs> did you get a chance to link up with, link up with any of them? Uh, what's your impression of them from afar? Um, they're awesome. I mean, I, I, I love both of those guys. I got a chance to say what up to them for just a second. But, you know, I kind of stay in my lane. I kind of mind my own business for the most part. And, you know, I'm there to enjoy the Drake show, but anytime I walk by any of the NBA guys or any of the young bucks like that, like oh, young bucks, I say, I don't know why I feel like I'm so old. <laughs> um, you know, I, I get a chance to go say what up. So, you know, I'm always trying to put out some positive energy and some love whenever I meet these guys. And, you know, they're great players. They're great dudes. And I wish them nothing but the best. So I think that's what I get a chance to portray whenever I see them. And, um, you know, it's dope being around greatness in settings like that. And I think that's what Drake does the best is, you know, he allows some of the greatest people um, in sports and music and around the world to get a chance to come together. And, you know, that's why I love those shows. And I got a chance to, to do it again the other night. So um, it's always a good time when Drake comes into town. I know Lou loves this next question. Uh, back in 2020, we got the Magic City wings. You said, believe it or not, mm. the chicken wings at Magic City Delicious. are the best I've ever had. What the hell's in these yeah. wings? It's a good product, man. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever it's they got a, going on product. there is really, really good. And once again, I'm thankful to my great friend, Chandler Parsons, <laughs> because I didn't go in there alone. There we go. <laughs> By the way, if we're ever back to Lemon Pepper Lou was obviously the guy, Johnny. And I went recently, and they were just as tasty. We have to go. Do we have to go? We do. Uh, Can I go? We, it's, it's, yeah, you got to do a live show. With Johnny, me. my last question is, obviously, I know you got a lot going on. You know, the world, what's the world expect now coming up from Johnny Football? Is sports, media, what do you got on tap? Yeah, I got a lot coming. Um, mm. Kind of playing it close to the vest right now with what's coming on. I'm coming back to... Uh, L.A. this week, I'm going to take 
some money of yours on the golf course. <laughs> I'm going to hang out. I'm going to enjoy. I'm kind of finding out where my body is right now and seeing out. where next steps are as far as sports. So, um, you know, life is good. I'm happy, healthy, and that's just really where I'm going. Can you guys please take Lou on the golf course? I would course love to. And then get some video. Have you ever, come on, Lou. Have you we ever golfed? You, I've literally never been on a golf course. This has to happen. That's all right. 37 years old, never easy. been on a golf course. Yeah. Oh, never been. We got you, bro. Don't worry. Yeah, you're not. But you can't take money from it. Like, that's the no, rule, no, right? No, no, We won't play Just from each First other. First time. We won't play some. now. No. <laughs> I'm trying we to won't. protect you, Lou. <laughs> no, it'll be fun. We got you. Next week. I appreciate it. I'm rolling. We got a All minute right. left, Chandler. Anything you want to share? Choo! That's it, Johnny. I'm happy for you, buddy. For real. I love you now. Far hey, buddy, you come. I wish you would tell him about that little streak you went on in Dallas. That little lucky rabbit's foot run you, you, uh, you got is, on whenever I moved That is true. There was a time the in Dallas also where Johnny stayed with me for about a good month, and I think I averaged 25 for that month. Oh, we wow. always called Johnny my little <laughs> rabbit's foot. <laughs> we, and by the way, we would go. we dropped drop 25. We would go out. We would party, and we would still do it the next night, and it was just rinse and repeat, and it was... He was my good luck charm. I want to hear the best hey. going out story. Oh, that's PG thirteen. We're gonna yeah. need more than. Yeah, I don't know if this is the show. Twenty for, seconds left. That's a PG thirteen. We're gonna need more than a minute. We had a great, uh, we had a great speech toast on Martin Luther King Day one time. We what? We had a. Wait, uh, wait, wait. We had a great, we had some great, great, great Cabo <laughs> trips. There's nothing that Why we can really talk about. A yeah, what? The Don't worry about it. We'll tell you after the show. But if you a, think we're not starting the speech, show tomorrow Deuce. with the end of today's show, Lou and I have questions. Deuce, Johnny, Johnny appreciate, appreciate it, buddy. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. See we're you guys. Thank here. you for having me on. We'll see you all tomorrow. The running back, running back, running it up, running back, running it up. The running back, yeah.